Scott Pilgrim versus the world. You obviously have a very devoted fanboy following, but this is a bigger film. How do you balance sort of tailoring to your fanboy sort of audience, but also being more accessible to a larger audience? I tend to approach all the films that I've done and the TV shows as um, what would I like to watch, and then you just hope that other people respond to it. And I, I, I think I try and approach it in an uncynical way that I'm not sort of trying to push buttons particularly. I'm sort of just, you know, just, I'm trying to have as much fun as a director as I hope an audience member would. And um, there are a lot of references to kind of games and comics and music and films, but like, it, none of those should deter you from what the scene is actually about. That it's like kind of extra kind of like sort of, you know, sort of sprinkles on top really. Um, so I think the central story and the love story and that metaphor should be kind of like, hopefully really easy to understand and like, things about relationships that everybody's been through and the other stuff is kind of like elaborate dressing you know based on the fact that the character has like grown up through this kind of pop culture and that he is like living his life like a video game that he's in this kind of sort of almost like a he's a fantasist you know yeah it's very sort of postmodern according to my understanding of postmodern which <laughs> Probably well, incorrect. I, I, I kind of see it as like a big daydream. I sort of see the film as like a big daydream is that Scott Pilgrim is like a, a character who's in this kind of, um, you know, sort of perpetual adolescence and hasn't really grown up yet and uh, he's living his life through the media that he consumes. And, and what the film is about at the end essentially is about him kind of growing up and, you know, kind of correcting some wrongs and sort of like getting a chance to do everything right. Cool. Uh, what... What sort of actor are you looking for to play Henry Pym? Uh, well, uh, that would give away our take on the script, so I won't go into that too much because, mm. like, sort of, it's it's uh, it's also something I haven't worked on that for two years. I have yeah. worked on this film solidly for two years. So the last time I actually did any work on Ant Man was like in two thousand and eight. So. You were to say you were looking for a skinny, slacker, hipster type. No, you're out. I'd be thinking, yeah. <laughs> um, Maybe you've done your head. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, Tintin, you're credited as a co-writer on that. Um, you have a really distinct sense of humor. How do you graft that onto a big, broad film like Tintin? Well, in the case of Tintin, I mean, I only really worked on that for eight weeks before I started in Scott Pilgrim and I wasn't around during the shoot at all which was an enormous bummer because I basically like worked on a film with Steven Spielberg and Peter Jackson and then I wasn't actually around to be on the set at all so I kind of feel like I completely missed the boat like to actually watch that all in in, in action but um, in the case of that one I didn't try and graft my own personality on it we just tried to be true to Hergé and the kind of like breathless enthusiasm and humor of that, so it certainly not, won't feel like an Edgar Wright script. I'd like to see you direct one of those. Well, let's see. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim versus the world.